Right, let's just look at your um, rhythm work, first of all. So, um, looking at rhythm number 10. Okay, so this one. So, um, at the moment, it's trying to get the single quaver in the correct place. Okay, that's quite essential in music playing because it comes up quite a lot in sort of syncopated music, dotted rhythms as well. Okay, where you get an uneven amount of notes or rhythms, sorry. So number 10, two beats in a bar. So first of all, just practice going from crotchets in both hands and do slow down. You'll find it much easier if you slow your beat down. So go from crotchets like this, whole notes, and then split your right hand into quavers. Then go back to crotchets. So you're getting the distinction between the crotchet and dividing into quavers, which are halves, of course. Okay, then you can start the rhythm. Start it now. So it's one, two, and one, then a tie, and one, two, and one, two, and one, two. Okay, I'll do it once again. Start the left hand first. One, two. One, two, and one, and two, and one, and two and one, and two, and one, two. But you will find it a lot easier if you just slow down your beat completely. I'll also deal with um, the Le Chant today, French piece. Now again, this rhythm's quite more complicated than the rhythms you're doing at the moment in your rhythm makers. So we're going up a step here. All right, now three beats in a bar. So let's do the same thing. Let's do a slow three beat. Let's just do crotchets, then do quavers, and then see if you can do semi-quavers. Then crotchets again, two, three, one, two, and now quavers, one and two and three and one and two, and now semi-quavers, one, two, one, two. Okay, so you get the distinction between the whole notes, the one beat notes, the halves and the quarters. It's important that they all relate back to that beat because all the time I was doing that, my left hand kept the beat all the time. It didn't change. Okay, and that's what the metronomic part of the music is. And that's what we will listen for. An examiner will listen for, anybody will listen for in music to make sure that it's metronomically correct. Okay. So this rhythm here, I can clap it first. And I'm gonna use one and two and in my counting. One and two and three and. 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 So that's the first four bars which we're dealing with. Now, if you count using the one and two and counting, in your second bar, where you've got those semiquavers, it means that the and count comes on the third of those four semiquavers. All right, so it does help you to place them a little bit if you use the one and two and, but you have to realize that one comes on the first semiquaver and the half comes on the third semiquaver because of course two quarters make the half, two quarters make the other half, all right? So using the one and two and, which you've got written on your practice sheet, um, will help with that. So this time I'm just going to choose the G that we start on and I'm just gonna play the rhythm on the one note. One and two and three and. One and two and three and. One and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and. Okay, now I'm going to play it using the notes. Make sure you remember F sharp, that's in your key signature. One and two and three and 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 one and two and three and. Okay, so listen to that rhythm quite a few times, really listen hard to it. 
Do the counting yourself when you're playing so that you're always keeping the correct count and the correct lengths of the, all these different types of note values. Now the other thing with this piece is the left hand, the joining of the left hand. So you've got an exercise on your sheet which just starts with a single note and then gradually adds the underneath as well. What we're aiming for is that you join the B to the C and the C back again to the B. But in between you've got two G's so you have to lift the key, all right? So there is a little lift with the fourth finger. So on my music here, I've got a little arrow. I've sort of matched it with the third beat of the bar there, or just the last quaver there. But basically the G has to lift just before the bar line. It's no good waiting until you need to play it because it'll then be too late, all right? It's got to lift so that it can go down again. So we have to decide where we're going to lift it. So the best thing to do is just before the bar line. So if you watch carefully in my left hand, I'm starting with two and four, G and B. Two, three, I'm just gonna lift the G, but keep the B down and then replace the G again with the C. Then I lift both notes to play the C and G again. Two, three, lift the G, keep the thumb down and replace the G again with the B. And then you repeat the same thing coming back again, lift the G, but join the B to the C. Lift the G, but join the thumb to the B and back again. So you need to get quite proficient at doing that. I know I'm not counting, but I'm just, it's just the physical action. Um, it's coordinating that you're moving, lifting one finger, but keeping the other finger down. So you're splitting your hand in half to do two different things, two different actions within the one hand, all right? So a little bit more complicated than we've done before. So work at those particular parts of this little piece and we'll start to get going on it then.